welcome to the Harry Jackson Show. I'm your host, Harry Jackson. You're listening to us on the Urban Family Talk Network. This week, we have an amazing thing coming up starting tomorrow, and that is we are going to have a share and uh, we're going to be asking you to help us, and we'll say this right at the top of the hour. We need you to call in, leave a testimony, and then when the week starts, we need for you to give a gift, make a difference, change a life. You could reach out to us at 877 877- 616-2396. That's 877-616-2396. And uh, leave your testimony there about how the Harry Jackson Show and the Urban Family Talk Network has been a blessing to you. Uh, they have impacted your life in some way, and we pray that we have helped you. Uh, we've been on since about February. And uh, ironically, we started right around the time of my birthday, and uh, I thought that was an amazing gift from the Lord. Um, We, in this past year, celebrated an amazing several gifts uh, that God gave. About seven years ago, I had a challenge health-wise, was in the hospital uh, for major surgery, cancer surgery, it nearly expired, and in 2006, awoke uh, in the hospital. And on that day, there was a amazing article that had been written in the Baltimore Sun that talked about me, featured me at a picture, talked about how we were seizing a moral mandate, and that also happened on the 4th of February, my birthday. And uh, so the Lord and I have an amazing history uh, in celebrating that birthday time. Some incredible things are going forth, and uh, we now have a great opportunity through the Harry Jackson Show to fulfill that calling that was restored. They gave me about a 10% chance of living back in those days, and uh, we now have gone past the five-year survival rate, past the seven-year point now, and believe the Lord has much in store. And a lot has to do with this vision of radio, print, books, sharing the gospel, and attempting to challenge Christians to think biblically and to act consistently biblically. I want to bring David Parlett into this discussion with us, our co-host, and we're just going to talk a little bit today about the power of this program, the power of the Urban Family Talk Network, the power of the American Family Radio Network. How's it felt to be on uh, radio for, oh, about eight months now, David Parlett, for you? You've been on uh, at least four days out of the week for several months. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, amazing, wonderful. Always thank I always thank God for the opportunity to declare His name and His love and His grace uh, across these airwaves, uh, and particularly from my life. And I'm, I'm appreciative of working with you. Well, how do we measure impact? Uh, we have seen a lot of people begin to follow us. On Twitter, uh, we have people, by the way, you can reach out to us at Bishop Harry, uh, the Harry Jackson Show, and we will respond to you on the air today. Um, but we've seen a lot of people reach out, a lot of people following us, a lot of people are commenting. How else would you say we should measure our success after being here day after day after day? After day. After day. After day. Every early morning, we're getting up before the crack of dawn, before the sun rises. And, and it's, a, it's a lot of prep time, uh, but there's this relationship going on beyond even just the, the radio crew here uh, because it becomes contagious. People talk about it in the congregation. And we're thinking differently, I believe. We're thinking more towards reaching out beyond the four walls of the local church 
reaching out into the community, reaching out for the nation, and our prayers are changing as well because we're praying uh, even more intently uh, for our government, for the, the president, for the leaders of this nation, and particularly what we're talking about here. Well, that's great. I, I think that from time to time you get a tweet that says uh, something like, the book that we've written, You Were Born for More, uh, had an impact upon them. By the way, we're going to be on the Daystar uh, program um, with Marcus and Joni Lamb. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow, there's always tomorrow. Yes, and so we're also going to do two shows with them uh, with regard to their flagship show, and then there is a show uh, that they do uh, daily uh, that is also a talk show, uh, number two and number one show. Then we'll also be on the 700 Club this week uh, down in Virginia Beach on Wednesday morning talking about the book You're Born for More. So these are opportunities to continue that mantle that sharing, but I am excited when people engage and make comments and say, hey, we're concerned about X, Y, and Z, or as we're going to be talking about a little bit later, the aftermath of the shutdown showdown, or as the Washington Post calls it, the shutdown showdown postmortem. Isn't that a tongue twister? The shutdown showdown postmortem. If you can say that three times without sounding like you're speaking in tongues, we'll give you a dollar. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely got your mouth and tongue coordinated all together to read that. I think so. and But to understand what the Washington Post says is a tongue twister sometimes. They <laughs> speak with forked tongue. I'll never forget, we had a major rally in downtown D.C. pro-marriage when the battle for marriage was going on in Washington, D.C. About 3,000-plus people on the mall folk from about at least 75 to 100 different churches, and they said there were 150 people on the mall. Mm -hmm. And I found out later the person taking the pictures was probably David Catania. Yes, I called him by name, a city council member who is openly gay, former Georgetown uh, law school student, and uh, they had vested interest in making the opposition to their agendas and the fact that they would not let the people vote. Uh, they had a, an agenda there uh, that they wanted to enforce. So I watched, as uh, Colonel Oliver Noyes calls it, the Washington Compost. I watched them with interest and know that they speak with forked tongue. Yes, I was there. I could testify there were thousands of people staying there pushing the issue for a vote. And reading the next day, there are only 150 people. It is Shocking to see how twist how we twist the truth. Well, that had happened to me on one Channel 7. We were on in the city at that time announcing our first rally. First rally was only hundreds, like five, six hundred versus three, four thousand. Uh, and in that particular time, it was amazing to me that the folks said, well, there are only 75 people there. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. There were buses that came from the Washington National Baptist Conference there, and uh, they brought 75 people all by themselves. It's 75 pastors, by the way, not just regular people. And I realized at the very beginning, we were in for a combat around truth. And back to our theme this morning about the share -thon, isn't that what's happening in the nation, that there's conflict going on about what the truth is, how truth is shared, whether the people out there listening this morning will get an opportunity to understand the news and public affairs in the context of eternal truth and in the context of the real facts that are going on in our nation. Well, we know the share is helpful in allowing free speech from the position of being a Christian, promoting the Bible in a free way. Yes, it is. And it's interesting that uh, we have this opportunity to give not only biblical information, which would be great, but if we just read the Bible out loud, it would have a major impact. But we have, can take it a step further in this free nation 
and that is we can lead people to Christ. We can also tell them how now shall we live. Here's how you apply the Word of God. And that application, the way you should think and should walk and should talk and do and live the way that Christ Jesus has ordained that we should live, seemed to me that this is part of being the freest nation in the world. What about this article that we find in the Christian Post? That Christian radio is how old, Pastor Dave? Yeah, it's it's amazing. I didn't realize that we were 90 years old Yay. from a Christian broadcasting perspective. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to me, I guess, us. <laughs> we go. Woo, 90 years old. We're 90. getting old. That's and, right. And but, but that's the blessing of God. They have 2,400, that's 2,400 Christian radio stations. That's amazing. And 100 Christian television stations. 100, and we're not walking on a cane, we're walking upright, and we're sort of like Moses was when he went into the promised land, or he approached the promised land, he didn't go in, but his his eye uh, was not dimmed or his strength abated, and then who was the guy along with Joshua that went in? Caleb. Caleb was the man who had all his faculties about him, he was strong, and he said when announced that he should take a certain piece of property, yes. give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. Maybe that's what Christian Radio, if it could collectively speak today, would be saying, give me this mountain. And there's a huge teaching out now about the seven mountains of culture. Give me the mountain of media. Let's make a difference for the Lord. And we're able to take this land as though we were young and spry, we can make a difference. And that Caleb, that old man, was willing to depossess those giants, the enemies, on that mountain because he knew God had called him to take the mountain as his inheritance. Exactly right. So it's amazing how the biblical stories uh, can inform our behavior mm. and inform the kind of spirit we should have the older we get. And the more beleaguered we are by persecution, opposition, uh, there are people who've listened to this broadcast who certainly aren't in agreement with us. I remember being on Face the Nation right before Easter, actually Easter Sunday morning. Uh, we taped it before then. And we're on with the imam from Boston, where the Boston Marathon bombers no doubt went to their particular mosque. And I thought the guy was a little bit hostile. And the next few weeks, the tweets that we received were from some of their followers who were saying negative things about us. And uh, we thought, isn't that interesting? They seem to be so aggressive. And then, boom, we have this terrible tragedy initiated by one of their ilk, one of their fellow brethren in that group. And to know that we're in a land of opportunity of freedom of speech and that freedom has sometimes been misused by the wrong kinds of folks but there are a whole lot of people that want to shut down the voice of the 90 year old and keep this industry from speaking out and encouraging people in the name of the lord well, the, and i think the power of this station in this particular program is to be able to reach out to those who are willing to listen and be activated to go do something good, positive for the Lord. And I think that's the power of this program and this station. Well, it's interesting that 90 years ago, the first Christian program was the worship service of Calvary Episcopal Church. It went over the air on KDKA in Pittsburgh. And since that time, Christian broadcasting has flourished in the United States and around the world Craig Parshall, Senior Vice President, General Counsel of the National Religious Broadcaster, says this. He is also the husband of uh, Janet Parshall. Parshall. Not only do I think Christian broadcasting is still relevant and vibrant, I'm increasingly impressed at how the Lord is using every aspect of media technology to get the gospel to unreachable areas via radio TV, and Internet programs. I believe that you who are listening today are part of that process. I want you to call in and give a testimony at 877-616-2396. That's 
616-263-9616. Tell the good folks at the Urban Family Talk Network that they're doing a good job and you're listening to The Harry Jackson Show. We'll be right back after this break. With today's Faith to Action commentary, here's Janet Porter. Investigate the NSA and IRS. More than 30 national pro-family leaders, including Don Wildman, Dr. James Dobson, and Phyllis Schlafly, who represent millions of American citizens, are calling for full congressional investigations of the NSA and IRS, who have violated the Fourth Amendment with illegal search and seizures without probable cause. You can add your voice by sending a free fax to Congress at F2A.org and see the letters delivered to Chairman Issa, Camp, and Congressman Sensenbrenner, who has initiated the Sensenbrenner-Leahy proposal to curb the illegal invasion of our privacy. Whether you're conservative or liberal, we can all agree to rein in the government abuse of power and protect the privacy of every American. Visit F2A.org for more commentaries and action steps, along with news, links, and much more for your state. Go to F2A.org. At my family's favorite ice cream chain, well, you know the one where you can choose your favorite ingredients and then they mix all those incredible flavors together right in front of you. Well, as they create your ice cream masterpiece, you can choose one of three sizes, the I really like it or the small size, the I love it a lot or the medium, and the I gotta have it or, well, you guessed it, the large size. And as we order, my kids and I think we need the gotta have it size and my wife says, come on, do you really need it? It got me thinking, though, about my relationship with God's Son. Do I like Him? Do I love Him? Or have I got to have Him? And maybe that's where you are right now. Your relationship with Jesus is just that. It's your relationship. Have you been holding back and just tasting Jesus? Or do you want to find out more by stepping out and saying, I've got to have you? To find out more about the life that Jesus has for you, call 888-NEED-HIM. That's 888-NEED-HIM or chat with us live at needhim.org. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Does that scripture sound familiar? Well, it should. Did you forget how awesome you really are? The things that you've allowed yourself to accept lately go against who God has created you to be. Those things seem good at the time and you've maybe even convinced yourself that it's the right decision or the right way to go. But take a minute to step back and try the Spirit by the Spirit. See if it lines up with what you know and who you know. If there's a discrepancy, make the change and get it right. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And as a daughter of the King, everything around you should reflect that. With a heart for the urban family, I'm today's urban woman, Tony Johnson. Learn more at urbanfamilytalk.com. Welcome back to the Harry Jackson Show. I'm your host, Harry Jackson, joined in the studio by David Parlett. Before we hit kind of in reverse order, the news of the day. What we want to do is we want to give a shout-out to Will and Miki Addison, who really are the driving force behind the Urban Family Talk Network. And uh, this has been their stewardship under the visionary leadership of American Family Radio, who believe that there needed to be some specifically urban-oriented uh, programming that would be going forth. Uh, we had the distinction of being one of the first shows on the air, uh, along with Will and Miki, and uh, we're very, very thankful for them. Uh, we love it when she gives her minutes of encouragement, and we thank God that they are doing a daily broadcast, and for the others, Star Parker and others who are on this specific network, we have been charged with a commission to make a difference. And we hope that you're going to help us by reaching out, telling your testimony. You can do it at 877-616-2396, 877-616-2396. And then tomorrow morning, 
steal your child's milk money and send it into us. Well, that's not exactly biblical, but there was a woman who just had a cruise of oil and a little bit of meal in the Bible, and Elijah said to her, it's time for you to sow into God's kingdom purposes and put that first, and then God multiplied what she had. And uh, don't take anything away from your children uh, this morning for us. But I want to emphasize that no matter how small the gift, there can be a powerful multiplication and a result. And from time to time, those of us who serve the Lord go through these moments of having to lean on him. David Parlett, there's a verse in the Bible that I was looking at, talking to some friends who are going through a time of personal leanness and challenge and it is in Hebrews chapter 11 and it says that Jacob blessed his children and then it says he did so leaning on his staff and all through Hebrews chapter 11 it talks about this panoramic uh, view of faith that Noah built the ark, and this one did that, and the other did the other things. But it seemed as though Jacob's activity was only releasing a blessing, but the significance of leaning on his staff was this. Jacob, whose name means supplanter, manipulator, he was a MacGyver of his day. He was a guy that did it his way and his timing with his human strength. The emphasis in that verse is that He had to learn how to be dependent. And when his physical strength was limited, he had no choice but to rest upon the strength of God instead of his own strength. Paul said it this way, when I am weak, then I'm strong. And today, folks, we are weak. We have no ability to do this program to make a difference and impact in lives unless we get assistance from others and visionarily prompted assistance. Uh, There's no exchange of goods. There's no commercial uh, modification or commercial uh, dimension of it. We're not selling a product per se, but rather if you are sensing and believing that what you've been hearing on the totality of this network is worth something, then you can give a gift and make a difference And we are dependent, like Jacob of old, we're leaning on our staff and praying blessings upon you. Three stories, Dave Perlite, that we're dealing with. We want to share all three of them and then get your interactive feedback about it. Today, USA Today, 1021, first Monday morning after the shutdown of the government. And it was on and popping there And uh, number one story, I think, for us is that there is a shutdown, showdown, postmortem. We're going to come back and talk about who the winners and losers are from our perspective. We believe the GOP, uh, I'm going to call myself a conservative. I now have been even backtracking from that language. I want to use the phraseology, I'm a biblical independent with conservative leanings. And uh, I don't know whether I want to identify myself with the Republican Party. Uh, I left the Democrats when they left Jesus at the door. If they can't claim God, I don't know who they're claiming. Hallelujah. So I guess I've been a radical, biblical, independent for a long time. Number two story we'll talk about is a call for help uh, that has come from the health website. If you can't sign on and sign up, what good is this thing? I mean, how are you going to get health insurance if the technology doesn't work? And the third major story is the fact that two dudes got out of prison and went back home with forged papers. And as is the case, just look at these brothers, picture Charles Walker and Joseph Jenkins. You know, they're killers. They had forged papers. They don't look like the sharpest knives in the drawers just looking at their pictures. Hallelujah. Uh, But if I got out on Ford's paper, knew they were phony, would I go back where I could be captured at home? Uh, Not. Uh, So not 
the high HMC. Do you know they have a do not have a HMC? What does that mean? It's a high marble count. <laughs> they got an LMC, a low marble count, or or you might say they're one fry short of a happy meal. And uh, so, <laughs> how let's. Did, how did then? How did they escape from prison? How did it get out? Woo. Somehow in the prison they had money, brother. Yeah. And the guys didn't say, "We don't know whether you're smart enough to use our forged papers." See, taking them on as customers and clients, the guy who forged the paper now has put an end to his very lucrative business. If we think these guys were smart enough to think this up in the beginning, ah, not so. Uh, so obviously this thing had been done before. Obviously they're following a time-worn pattern and path. Obviously the maker of these papers is about to get a knock on his door by the police himself. He won't be free long either. And all because he could not discern that these folks were not of the high MC group, but of the LMC group, low marble count. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah. And how they found the money to pay him to forge the paper. That's the tricky part. And it shows you that in the prisons, there are different, definitely great economies. I've just been asked to join the board of Prison Fellowship, uh, the organization that Chuck Colson founded, doing the most powerful work in the nations of the world regarding working with prisoners and helping folk out who need restorative justice. But the reality is uh, that some folk are locked up and should stay locked up. I'm a big believer that the death penalty should still be on the table. Uh, that's a very controversial thing. But it was good enough for God in the Old Testament to declare that some folks are not rehabilitatable. Uh, then why should we spend $1 million, $2 million to keep them alive so that they can break out and act up and kill somebody else again? That makes no sense to me. But we've had a history of injustice in the nation that people have been lynched uh, by vigilantes. People have been uh, misidentified. Folks have been jailed inappropriately. The DNA process has helped us a lot in making sure that those accused of rape and murder are, in fact, the folks who have done these heinous crimes. So we're a little safer with the death penalty than before. But... A large part of the problem, I believe, of race in America today is the fact that under 30 years old, a huge number of African Americans and Hispanics are spending their developmental years without the possibility of reform on unnecessarily high mandatory uh, incarceration terms, and they become worthless in terms of reentry with an 80 some percent recidivism rate. So the Florida escapees point out once again, as I look at them, based on third grade test scores, David Parlett, mm -hmm. we can determine in America how many prisons that we need to build. Jesse Jackson made that statistic and that process famous. But unfortunately, neither he nor the Democratic Party who claimed that they were the liberators of people behind bars did anything about turning those numbers around by increasing impact at schools, not larger prison cells. And so I think we've got a problem in America that largely male minorities are spending time in jail at an incredible expense. I'd rather give them welfare than give them that kind of jail care. What say yeah. you? Absolutely. And, of course, we know it is the family breakdown that really is the beginning process of losing these young people, these young men and some women, uh, to the prison system and to a life of crime. And uh, so we need to really spend the time, energy, money in rebuilding families and getting the dads back into the homes to help raise the kids properly. Yes, this past Sunday we talked about how to overcome an affair what to do if your family is challenged by an affair. We're going to go through some other fundamental 
tools that people can use in terms of the church teachings, but this kind of practical teaching is important. And here on the Harry Jackson Show, Faith and Family Fridays, we talk often about practical tools to help the family. Unless we see policies that support the family from a public policy point of view in the government, unless we see churches and community outreach organizations that teach and train people who have no model in the home, we will repeat this cycle of family disintegration. And I believe there's going to be a trajectory toward a downhill spiral in our culture. And uh, the worst of all is our African-American community. We are the most church people in the nation, the most religious. We read our Bibles more than anybody else, pray them more than anybody else. And rightfully so, we've been traumatized by our impact with American culture, 400 years of slavery, discrimination, lynching, torture, et cetera. But something's got to turn us around. I believe the power of God is the only thing that can help us. What do you think about the fact that the health website is still not working, David? Mm-mm. I heard the other day that the uh, contract was awarded to a Canadian company who really has not a good track record in the past. Canadians. Canadians, and they really didn't uh, talk to any of the healthcare people to really know how to design a program for people to be able to get on the website. So it was doomed to failure from the very get go. As we talk about race, I got some brothers from Washington, D.C. that need a job. So why are they giving my jobs away to the Canadian people? I'm sorry, folks. I drank too much coffee this morning. <laughs> they, they had to underbid all the other probably good American companies. When, <laughs> you know, and web designers. My grandfather, who ran a construction company, helped me to understand that sometimes when people underbid you dramatically, it's just because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah they, they don't have enough good experience because they're... Their track record was a bad track record to begin with, yet our government awarded them hundreds of millions of dollars. Yes, our w- government. Wa- wasting our good taxpayers' dollars. Yes. Uh, in designing a wrong program that now they're going to really have to pay for. Uh, so really, this is a poorly designed uh, website, and uh, they need to shut the thing down and redesign it quickly. Now I'm confused. It says here in USA Today, and if it's in print and it's by a major newspaper, we know that it's true. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Everybody in the studio is sure laughing yeah, on that one. Uh, but it's supposed to be true. They say that higher rates are predicted. Now, we've been saying that forever. The administration said, no, we're going to lower the rates of people, and there is going to be an, an inclusiveness. Everybody's going to be able to get on, so we can't log on, can't get on. People are not going to be covered. Rates have already gone up. Businesses are going out of business, and yet we're still arguing about whether Obamacare or health care is the right thing. Mm. Do you have a news flash for us before we go to a hard stop and a break here, David Burlett? Ooh, well, you know, we don't even know how many people really have been able to log on. They're, they're not able to be able to track the number of people, mm-hmm. who, and they're not sure whether they have to start this process over again. So something's got to be done from the very foundation. You know, and, you know, it's scary to think that these are the people that are going to have all of our health information. They're going to have our personal information. And then the IRS is behind it. You know, it's a scary day to live in here with, with uh, turning our health care over to the government. Well, it is. And I'm thankful for the uh, present administration because they've shown us in so many ways things not to do this way again. And uh, but if you contrast the campaign excellence and technology and the breakthrough uh, innovation, if you will, in the political realm of the Obama campaign and with the Neanderthal implementation of so many things, uh, even the lockdown that we've just experienced, folks were called back to work, but they had wrong telephone numbers, bad emails. Folks weren't able to get back into work. Uh, something got to change in this Washington capital area. Folks, well, there's one more segment to the Harry Jackson Show. We'll be right back.
back to Genesis with Dr. John Morris, scientist with the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, I saw that engineers have duplicated the propeller mechanism that some single-celled organisms use. So does this prove evolution? Chris, many evolutionists think it has. They think that if engineers can duplicate something that's found in nature, it proves that it happened by natural processes without any intelligent design. How foolish! Now, the propeller mechanism for the tiny E. coli bacteria has been duplicated. With great care and great expense, evolutionists were able to fabricate a hair-like strand of magnetic particles which can rotate in the presence of a magnetic field. They seem to forget that it took a room full of brilliant PhDs to do this. These things don't happen by random natural processes. What the scientists did was analogous to creation, not evolution. Face it, Chris, back to Genesis creation is the one that fits the evidence. This is Chris O'Brien. Thanks for going back to Genesis. Satan is a powerful enemy, one we don't have the power to beat on our own. That's why Dr. Tony Evans says it sure is great that God doesn't leave us on our own. He explains how the Lord more than levels the playing field as he brings us the alternative view. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10, in order that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in heavenly places. Angels are in heavenly places. Rulers and authorities refer to angels. If you got an angelic problem, you need an angelic solution. Now, most of us have very little consciousness of angels, but what you need to understand is that there is a battle going on and God has a whole group of angels. When the Bible says the Lord of hosts, that means the Lord who is in military charge of an angelic corps whose job it is to meet demonic action that is attacking you. When you say the devil is attacking me, it's probably not the devil because he can't be but one place at a time. He's not God, but he has a whole host of angels, which meant that he's got an angel called the demon with your name on it that he seeks after you to bring destruction in your life. Now, if you've got a demon after you, you're no power for a demon. You need God to tell one of his angels to come meet one of your demons in order to neutralize him. So, if you need angelic help, but you don't have a heavenly mindset, then you don't know how to get to the help you need at the time you need it. Learn more about the battle going on behind the scenes of your life. Request a copy of Dr. Evans' book, Victory in Spiritual Warfare. It'll not only teach you what the Bible has to say about our fight against the devil and his influence, you'll find the real life help you've been looking for. Visit us at TonyEvans.org for details. You've been listening to The Alternative View. Welcome back to the Harry Jackson Show. I'm your host, Harry Jackson. This program is on the day before the share on the Urban Family Talk Network. I'll get that out. And also American Family Radio. We want you to share a testimony or call in and make a contribution. 877-616-2396. In one of the earlier segments, I talked about the widow with the cruise of oil and the barrel of meal, how Elijah was fed by that little bit of substance. And uh, it was amazing uh, how he was directed from a brook called Cherith, a place of refining, a place of God's testing him in terms of obedience and self-control and then the Lord said, go to this place called Zarephath where I have prepared a widow woman to care for you there. And uh, I think on the 90th birthday of Christian radio, uh, as is talked about in a yesterday, Sunday, October 20th, Christian Post article written by Sarah Haymaker, uh, or a hammocker, it's very important that we would understand that it's little gifts by a lot of people and big gifts by those who have been blessed of God. And all of us need to be thankful that we have this opportunity. So if you want to give a shout out and say you're thankful for Harry Jackson's show, the Urban Family Talk Network, or AFA, 
You can reach us at 877-616-2396. 877-616-2396. Talk about life change. But our lives were changed for 16 days, David Parlett. Mm. During the shutdown of 2013, and it affected churches, church attendance, economies. It affected people. They had to take stock of their lives. It was almost like recent health care scares I've had where I know I better take care of myself a little bit better uh, because life is and tomorrow's not promised. What do you see are, is the aftermath of this? Mm. With the showdown, do you think that people will make back the money or really get back what they missed? from 16 days, Mm. one half a month of being laid off. Mm -mm. Well, we know the federal workers got a two-week paid vacation, uh, so they didn't really get their work done, but they're going to get their pay back. I had back my neighbor right down the street. He's a policy writer uh, for one of the big government agencies, and he said, it's it's such a shame. Uh, I'm just sitting at home doing doing my personal work, and I could be at work being productive, but it's, mm-hmm. it's hurting the whole city, and it's hurting so many other vendors in the city. Well, you know, some people would have said if they had a lot of faith and a little extra money, hallelujah, I don't have to go into work. <laughs> yes, yes. And while they're fussing and fighting, I'm going to be chilling. Yeah. I wonder if somebody had vision enough to take a Florida vacation from Maryland and go sit down on a sunny beach at Daytona and enjoy... No, I, I think, unfortunately, with the here again, on again, off again dimension, no one was able to make productive use from 16 days of work off. Yeah, and it really was a kind of poorly designed tactic in, in the regards that we're going to shut the government down, although we're trying to make a point, but it really hurt a lot of folks. And so thank God the government's back to work. They're spending our money. Uh, but I think they need to redesign a whole brand new tactic on how we're to proceed from this point on and spending our money. Well, I would agree on the news section of USA Today. There's an interesting article called Shut Down Math, colon, No Work But Extra Pay. And it shows a guy from October 1 who is down protesting on a mall, and he's got a dollar bill stuck over his mouth. <laughs> And uh, so that has many, many symbols. One is you can't speak, uh, and I, I'm out here trying to protest, but if I talk too much, I'm going to lose my money, I think may be part of it. And then if they have lost time, money, effectiveness, very hard to see how they get it back. Winners and losers, we all think that, Republicans have lost, but the reality is with the new realignment of our government and the various new districting rules and regulations, aren't Republicans and Democrats playing to the majority of their constituents back home? Mm. So will there really be, in your opinion, any major fallout except that the Republican brand has been damaged. I I think that is certainly true. What else do you think has happened as a result of the shutdown? And we already know the part of the Republican Party, they're kind of split. Some are conservative, Tea Party, some traditional. And so that makes it hard to be able to get policy through. And so the Republican Party has got to huddle again. Uh, Huddle. Huddle. John Boehner's got to get these guys together, and they either have to go one plan together unified or they've they've lost these next couple years and they're going to lose the, the, the 2014 midterm election. Well, my big concern is that I don't think our president's approval ratings are going up. Independents don't like him. Hillary is a question mark in terms of whether she would be the awe-inspiring candidate that will bring people back. Um, I've got to wonder myself whether another outsider running for president 
will be more of the answer uh, to everybody's concerns. Uh, I want to know whether a Rick Perry uh, would run on the Republican side, or I can't see Rand Paul being really electable as president, although he probably has some of the great policy areas where I heard him talk about urban revitalization, urban uh, reconstruction, if you will, and economic development. And I thought he did a great, great job. He's a very bright man. Um, How about Mr. Cruz? Do you think he is going to cruise into the presidency? Mm, Well, he definitely got his name out there for all of us in America to recognize. Uh, there's no question he's a smart man, but whether he really yep. well trained. Princeton and Harvard. Yes, uh, uh, was was it Dershowitz who said he that Cruz is one of his brilliant students uh, on the yeah. other news the other night? Uh, but yeah, yeah, along with Obama. <laughs> <laughs> along with Obama. So uh, whoo, yes. do we do we trust our government and the, the Oval Office to these guys again? As as a, as a Harvard graduate school graduate. No more Harvard guys in the White House for a minute, please. Thanks. Woo. Well, Ted Cruz got his name out there. Everybody knows who he is, uh, but I, I think they have yes. to be more tactical in their, their, their process and how they proceed. Is someone like even uh, uh, Jeb Bush uh, possibly in the running in the future? I know his name has come up again and again. Yeah, I don't see us as a people re-electing a dynasty runner. Mm. I mean, how, you know, don't we have somebody other than last name Bush? Maybe Parlette. That sounds like a nice presidential name. Absolutely. Why, yeah. why, why, why would we want to have that? I mean, I think, uh, you know, we, we, we have to think about it a little bit, a little bit differently. Well, Jackson could go well at, in the White House, you know? I, I think we have a, a few here that would vote for you. Well, Andrew didn't do so well, <laughs> bless your heart. I don't know. I don't know. We've got an array of of different names here. We've got a Williams. And Frances, t- tell us your last name. She's Butler. Frances Butler is here behind the scenes be in the studio. And maybe President Butler. There's a movie out now about the butler in the White House. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so I think if you're the average American, you may be doing exactly what we're doing, as comical as it sounds, thinking who in the world can lead us out of this mess? Well, I, they'd have and to, where will they come from? Change the Constitution, I guess, or we're going to allow Butler, since you're from England, right? So we'd yeah. have to have a constitutional rearrangement. Now, you're getting to a serious point. The governor, Arnold, Arnold, my good friend Arnold, wants to be the president. And after his many private marital indiscretions, his challenging time as governor, he feels, I'm the one to be the terminator for the people. I will be the governor. I will be the president. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's the way. Mm. Yeah, so they would have to change the Constitution <laughs> to get the former yes. governor of California back or into the White House to lead us down the primrose path. I think Americans, in all deference to our people down in Mississippi this morning, Americans love the voice of Southern leaders. And uh, I dare not try to even put on my Southern voice this morning but I, I would say is that we like folk who are grounded and have some sensibilities, you know, so I'm not so sure fast-talking folk from Europe are going to fit into the historic. Yeah, yeah, especially if you got the Germanic sound. There's a group of folk that almost took over the world last century that had Germanic influences. Wow. So it might bring back some bad memories. But I believe that there is a leadership vacuum. I have been very much to return to the Rand Paul and Ted Cruz concept. I was impressed with Rand Paul's brain, his ability to articulate, his understanding that in a meeting I was with with 
folk who were saying that there has got to be a new face of conservatism in America and that spokespersons need to be brown and white and all a whole array of different kind of folk. And there need to be a lot younger folk. And I would add a missing group is strong women leaders. And although I love Michelle Bachman because of her Christian testimony, you know, she prayed in high school. Her family didn't have enough money to send her to college. And she felt as to praying that God would make a way for her. And he did. And to law school and to graduate law school. And unlike how the media tries to portray her, she's a very, very, um, very smart woman. Uh, and a very godly uh, persona and spirit and uh, great influence. Uh, and they try to make the Sarah Palins of the world the poster children for conservatism in America with the famous line, you know, I understand about international public policy, foreign policy, as I can see Russia from my window. There are a lot of small, smart people. But I think conservatives need women, 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 and they need blacks and Hispanics. And there's a tendency to say, we're going after a Hispanic vote, and uh, we can take a minute to tell all my conservative friends, you are not getting the point. The Cuban vote in Florida, for example, and some of the people who are from Columbia historically have already been Republican for a while because they're business owners and they have come to America via the Euro-Hispanic kind of connection, meaning many of these folks would identify as white. They would look white. They would not have the problems of the darker-hued Hispanic community. If you're going to New York City and you're dealing with the Hispanic group there, which would be Puerto Ricans, or you might as well call them Black Ricans, and some do. Uh, their whole political approach, very similar. The Democratic Party has wooed them. With the immigration issue, Mexicans are often in the Democratic camp. Three most important states in which we have immigration informing politics would be California, Arizona, also Texas. In those places, a heavy emphasis is put on democratic politics. So this idea that somehow, oh, we're going to have an re easy reach to touch Hispanics more than black, I think is wishful thinking unless different messaging happens by conservatives and give people a way that they can change their world. We've got 10 seconds left, Pastor Dave. Any response to my long diatribe? Yeah, and, and I love what you're saying. I, I think the next president I'd love to see sitting in the Oval Office going back again to not only helping minorities, but helping reestablish family. Who would be the presidential candidate? Woo! Doctor? You know, that's hard, that's hard to say. Could it be Ted Cruz? Could it be Rand Paul? Could it be Rubio? I well, that. next week we'll share with you the answer to this conundrum, and we'll be on the air again tomorrow.